Good morning, everyone. I was uh, remembering my old days, and uh, I was once the university band leader of Pico University, and I also had a flat stomach way back then. But now look at my stomach. <laughs> okay, so today we are talking. Uh, we are going to talk about succession in leadership. But first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Christian Lorena. I am still a student. 20 years old and three days. <laughs> okay, so I've attended the uh, second youth, uh, no, youth forum looking beyond disaster last 2012 in Sendai, Japan. And it was indeed a great privilege to be there. And now it is with great humility and great privilege to be here with you today. So we start. All of us has a dream, right? You are in the Maritime Academy of Asia in the Pacific because you want to be? You want to be? Seafarers. All of us has our own dreams. But are we talking about just that dream? Do we think about just about that dream? Or do we look ahead? And what will happen to us after we become seafarers, after we become presidents, after we become directors? Because it is an occurrence that we focus ourselves only to the dream. But what will happen to us if the dream collapses? What will happen to us if you have already reached the dream? The original name of this presentation is When You Had Been On Top, what happens next? Okay, so we begin. Let me just introduce our place to you. We came from Legazpi City, Albay, Bicol, the Philippines. As you can see, this is a picture of the Mayon Volcano with our Honorable Dr. Darren Mazer and Miss Ananya when they went there a week or two weeks ago. And this place is really vulnerable in cases of disasters, man-made and naturally occurring disasters. Okay, and this is also my school. It is Divine Word College of Legazpi. It is a Catholic institution that caters to students across the region from tertiary, uh, from elementary to the tertiary level. Okay, so we begin. I have some pieces of paper here. May I request some cadets to distribute these papers? These are just scratch papers and we'll do something with it. Okay? Please get one and pass. Please don't mind the, the writings. It's just a scratch paper for everyone. Can I have one, please? Thank you. Okay. Who can you see in the picture? <laughs> because you are in the seafaring industry, and I like my attire today because it has anchors. Yeah. Let's all make a boat. Do you know how to make a boat? Who knows how to make a boat? Please raise your hand. Okay. Can we do a boat? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's do it all together. Okay? How do you do a boat? Okay. How to make a boat? Okay. Let's all make a boat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's all make a boat. Okay. 
Okay, who is finished doing their votes? Raise your votes. Okay, okay. Who else? Okay, you already have votes, and later we're gonna play in the swimming pool with these votes. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then like this, and then like this. Okay. Okay, let's hold our, our votes like this. Okay, our votes. Who are finished doing their votes? Uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Some others did not make a vote. That's a bird. <laughs> okay, because we are in the Maritime Academy of Asia in the Pacific, this is in alignment of the specialty of this institution. They will be one of the greatest seafarers in the world that will conquer and circumnavigate the world one day. Okay. Can you see the boat? Please hold your boat and uh, imagine yourself as the captain of that boat. You're the captain of that boat. Okay, you remember Magellan's expedition to circumnavigate the world? It is, it is a lesson way back then in elementary and I know that you have been uh, learning about it all throughout your maritime days, right? Okay. Magellan will not be Magellan if he did not dream. And if he did not work out to follow his dreams, he would not be given an opportunity to circumnavigate the world. And in 1572, he landed in Cebu or in Limasawa Island and had the first mass there. So we have the Magellan's cross in Cebu, right? So Magellan practically had a boat. But he, did he do? the expedition alone. How many boats did he have? Five boats. What is the flagship? Victoria. Okay. Victoria? Okay. Let us think about ourselves as we are the first one among all the peoples in the world to circumnavigate the world. Imagine yourself as the first one, the captain of the ship, who will circumnavigate the world. Can you do it alone? Can you run a ship alone? Imagine yourself as the captain of this ship. But can you do running this ship alone? That's why we have a captain, marine transportation. We have marine engineers, right? We have different designations. But then what will happen next to us? Imagine that we have circumnavigated the world. We have been successful. The attention of the people is within us. And then after that, what happens next? The only question is, what happens next to us? Okay? Did you, did you get the idea? So let us see this boat as our organization. This boat is our organization and definitely it wouldn't run if it's only upon us. So we'll see, after the expedition, will this boat be still a boat and sail after your leadership capacity in the boat? Or will this boat sink into the, sh into the sea? Getting the concept now? You think about the organization itself and you think about your own welfare. What will happen to you after? Okay. Every one of us has their own times up. 
you have the end of your days here in the Maritime Academy of Asia and the Pacific as cadets, and you venture out to the whole world. Time's up. Is there really an end? So, upon seeing the end, will you continue to hold the steering wheel? Will you continue to hold the steering wheel? Or, or let other people experience what you have just experienced? Will you let other people be the captain of your ship? Or just skip it to yourself? That is the idea of succession in leadership. So, shall we begin? Okay. Let us put this in this point. Imagine yourself, yourself, you have been a president. You have been joining national, inter international conferences, colloquiums, seminars, trainings, and others. And you have been a national awardee. After all of that, after achieving so much, after being a captain, after being a successful deck officer, what happens next? That is the only question that will surround our presentation today. What will happen next? What will happen next? Because there are people who are just constricted with the idea that to attain our dreams is enough. To be a leader is enough. To be a captain is enough. To be a president is enough. But then, it is a reality that life does not end with your leadership capacity. You have a full life ahead of you. Okay. Many of us here are holding high positions. They are directors, heads of offices, presidents, general managers, chiefs, vice presidents, provosts, deans, high-ranking executives, and proprietors. Those are high positions. Right? So, what do you think will happen to them if they relinquish the position? Do they have dreams ahead of them? Or are they, are they just stuck with that leadership position? Okay, we are discussing leadership in our own simple ways. In maritime, leadership is another thing. But in, in our own fields, leadership is something that is discussed widely. And it, in its purest sense, it is something that is widely discussed and there are different topics about it. Please allow me to browse through my notes because if I would not be browsing through my notes, my idol is uh, Dr. Angelica Bailon. We may, we may be speaking the whole afternoon here. <laughs> okay. We have been talking about leadership in ages for a lot of years. We have been giving the youth an equal opportunity to lead. But there is a tendency for us to create a lot of leaders. But then, the tendency is they are just constricted to the leadership position. They are not given an opportunity to look ahead because according to the seminar that I've attended in Sendai, Japan, we look beyond disasters. So today, we look beyond our leadership capacity. We look beyond our dreams because life has so much more to offer than what we are dreaming for. As you can see, the leader drives the whole organization. But do you think that the organization is dependent upon the leader, what will happen to the organization if the leader leaves? Will it crash down like the boat? Will it sink? Will it tear apart? No organization more? Or will it continue to float? It will continue to travel around the world. Because leadership is a capacity to turn vision into reality. But remember, everyone, that leadership is not just by ourselves. We have the authority and we have the capacity to turn others' vision into reality. 
because we can give them a, an opportunity to lead. We cannot contain leadership in ourselves, just only in ourselves. There is a lot of people more who are equally capable and can do what you're doing right now. And then you are going to think, what will happen to me if somebody is all, also a leader like me? Will I be disregarded? Will I just be lying down? Will I just be inutile? So let's continue. Leadership is just the end or the tip of the iceberg. Remember the story of Titanic? Titanic sank because of the iceberg, right? Because the captain was looking to Jack and Rose doing uh, something in the deck, right? <laughs> okay, so leadership, we think about ourselves as someone who knows a lot, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. At the bottom of the iceberg, there's still a lot for us to learn. And one of those things is how to have a leadership succession. We continue. You remember what I've told you about Time's Up a while ago? We have been thinking, what will happen to yourself? After retiring as a captain, as a deck officer, as a marine engineer, what will happen to you? Are you, are you already thinking about it? Or you're still constricted about the knowledge that I still need to be, I still need to follow my dreams to become a deck officer, a marine, a captain, something like that. We have a connotation that let's cross the bridge when we get there. But what will happen to us when it's time's up and we haven't crossed the bridge yet? There is a tendency for us to constrict our ideas only to one specific thing. But then, it is just putting your yourself one step ahead. What will happen to you? Because we are in the same age, right? I'm 20 years old. What will happen to you when you become a deck officer at the age of 30 and you retire at the age of 45? What will happen to you when your lifespan is about 70 years old. So you have 15 years lying in the bed, doing nothing, doing nothing at all. Or you have the capacity to reach out to others, have a plan, and make the most of your time as equally important as fulfilling your dreams. What will happen to the organization? As, la as like what I've said, Will the, boat, will the boat sink? Will the organization sink? Will it be liquidated? Will it be nothing at all after all those years? Will it be turned into nothing? See? Will it float or will it sink? Ask yourself, after being a president, a general manager, a director, a project manager, a student, will my organization sink or will it sustain itself and flow? In the other sense, will I myself sink? I know I can sink because I have a inflatable tongue here. But when you sink, will you be dumbfounded? Or will you still be there, floating around and reimagining yourselves, having a different vision rather than your own views? Because succession in leadership is talent development and management of future leaders. Thinking ahead. It is about thinking ahead. Thinking beyond what you can think. Because what, as what I've said, you're still constricted about the idea that you, can, you should become deck officers. You should become captains. Preparing the organization for a shift of leadership. Remember, 
succession of leadership is not just about yourself. Succession of leadership is about everybody in the organization. Because we do not have the tendency all the time to relinquish our position and transfer it to another person, right? Somebody chooses it for us. For example, you have an appointed position and somebody higher than us thinks that somebody else is more capable to do this. But it is a very nice thought that we should prepare not only the next to us, but those who are staying. Those who are staying, preparing them for a shift of management, for a shift of leadership. Because change is inevitable, and there will always be change. That they should always see that the change is a positive effect for them. There is a change in leadership, and others may be given an opportunity to shine more. Okay, so I have this favorite anecdote. Looking forward without sacrificing the present. You know the saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. That's why we call it present. We have the gift of the present period. Why not make it more wider, our knowledge is more wider, that we think about the mystery ahead of the future. Because we have the present of the mo of the of the present moment. What will happen to us? A person who does not worry about the future will shortly have worries about the present. Remember that everything you do in the present moment emanates or reflects the future stance or where you will be in the near future. What will happen to you if you flunk your lessons, right? So, crash dreams. You don't have an idea. So, you start building up your career as, as early as you're studying now so that when the day comes you become the captain of the ship, you have an idea that the present moment way back then because you have did your best you are in that position because there are other people who are on the will of the wind just floating around and ju are just being there let the let the river flow for you but if you do not worry about the present your future is your sacrifice. Okay. Succession in leadership is thinking ahead. Thinking of the future stance and acting upon what will the future condition of yourself and the organization be. Okay. What will be the future of your organization and of yourself? will be because we correlate the present to the future because our present and our future is more parallel if you do your best today you will be a captain someday if you flunk today you will be i don't know that is a reflection of who, who we are how we build ourselves in the present terms and what will happen next to us in the near future. It must be a striking balance, thinking about the present while considering the future. Because there are some people who are busy acting upon today and therefore totally forget about the future. And there are also some people who are very widening their dreams. They have a lot of dreams, but they don't worry about the present. They have been thinking about, ah, okay, someday I will be that man. But who we are today is reflected of who will, who will we be in the future. Okay, succession is a security. 
your future and the organization's future. What will happen to you in the future? You won't be having a family. You will be in that leadership position. You will just keep on holding that steering wheel of the boat, of the ship. Or you will settle down with your family. And what will happen to the organization? Will it still survive without you? What will happen to that ship? Will it be broken without you? It, will it be rotten without you? Succession in leadership prepares a two-way mode. Yourself and the organization. Because we have the SM experience. Have you been to SM? How about our foreign friends? Have you been to SM? Have you been to... Uh, it, it is a mall. It is a mall in... Uh, around the Philippines, actually. It is a famous chain of malls in the Philippines. So recently, SM has a change in leadership. The, whole, the president of the SM Corporation Hansi eventually retired at the age of 60 and uh, relinquished his position unto a successor. But as the owner of the company, he has the power to be in that position until then, right? But because he, is, he has the capacity to look beyond what will happen to him, he relinquished the position as early as the age of 16. Had a very wonderful succession plan. And now, he is living a life ahead of him. Succession in leadership teaches us that we still have a life ahead of us. We still have a life that is full, and we still have a life that is not related to leadership that is not related to our dreams. We have our family with us and we have other people surrounding us that may be a part of our dreams. Okay. Will you trust a captain or somebody that does not know where to go? Will, will there be a captain that is said to bring the cargo to America but he brought the cargo to Antarctica? He who does not have a vision does not know where to go. And therefore, he cannot lead. Leaders are visionaries because leadership is the capacity to turn vision into reality. Okay, so we remember that when a leader itself, when somebody, when the captain does not know where to bring his ship, where it where is it leading? Then, he does not know where to go. When you entrust your life upon that captain, because that captain may bring the, the ship into a rocky shore, or Antarctica, there will be a lot of icebergs, and it will sink together, it will sink with the ship and, and freeze until death. Will you entrust your lives with that captain? So we remember a leader who has a vision. We remember a leader who thinks ahead, who is one step ahead of everyone. Because a leader should, have, should always have the capacity to envisualize. And therefore, we should always keep on moving forward and accept that there will always be change. We, you remember when we went to Corregidor Island? Has everyone, has our cadets already been to Corregidor Island? Some, some of us, okay. On our first day, aboard the map, map yacht, we went to the old time favorite historical Corregidor Island. And there is this one tunnel. You remember the Malinta? The Malinta Tunnel? Yes, sir. 
we went inside the tunnel and there was no light at all. So, according to history, it is called the Malinta Tunnel because there are a lot of linta. Linta is leech. And a linta, what it does, it is just stuck in there and then suck and suck and suck until sucking is over. And then, nothing at all. Just, just that, just that thing sticking in there. Right? So, do you think yourself just a leech to the leadership position? We just stick upon the steering wheel and doing nothing at all and visualizing yourself doing nothing, just being an intact or a leech? Or will you be anybody else? Not like the leech. Because, as what I've said, there is a life ahead of us. Not just the purest leadership position. Not just your dreams. It has been a wonderful opportunity that we detach ourselves from the leadership capacity and live our lives ahead of it. Okay. Some of us has been thinking that it is a pessimistic mindset that one day it will arrive that you will relinquish that position. But let us revert it back to an optimistic mindset. We must accept that our days as a leader will come into an end. That is why we prepare ourselves. What will happen to us? Remember the question, what happens to us? Okay, succession is a very effective way to sustain the whole organization. Because I am a student of a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Marketing Management. And we always think about long-term plans on how to sustain a company. You relinquish that position, but before you end your days as a leader of that organization, you must think that that organization that you are into must be able to stand by itself. You must be able to prepare your crew and the people aboard the ship, the organization, that they can stand up by their own feet in times of distress and when the time comes that you are gone. It is not merely about thinking about yourself. It is a two-way experience that we think about what will happen to us when the day comes? Many presentations have used this very powerful statement. A great leader does not produce followers, but great leaders as well. Captains has always had a capacity to create more captains. Because it is by giving an opportunity to the person to be at helm of the organization, to be a great leader. Because you will be remembered that you are a great leader because you have given others an opportunity. It is a very effective way to have a succession in leadership by thinking about different ways on how to sustain your organization and have a proper succession in leadership. Involve the whole organization in succession planning. When we think about the succession in planning is not just a plan by ourselves. We must change the mindset of the people that there will be a change in organization and therefore we should involve all of them we should involve everyone aboard the organization that they will be equipped and ready to embrace the change that will happen. We assess the present situation and risks implicating to the change in leadership. When we think of different changes, it has always implications of a risk. Right? You have a risk assessment and you always think about 
If I'm not the captain anymore, who will the captain be? And what will happen to the ship? So when you assess the problems inside the organization, before you step down as a president, as a leader, as a general manager, then the succession and leadership easily comes because you assess the risks and turning it into opportunities for the organization to grow. Assess the internal candidate suitable for key positions. For example, I, if I'm a leader, I am looking to somebody and I am grooming him or her to become the successor, the next in time. But it is not always the idea because there are appointed positions. But we can make recommendations on who to put into key positions if the day comes. And we should always restrict ourselves in the timeline. Though not restricting at all, but we should always be guided by a timeline. We should never hesitate to train other people. Because we are thinking that, what if I train them and they become better than me? What will happen to me? I will not be remembered. Let us please remove the mindset because training other people, according to Stephen Covey, when you give a man a fish, he lives for the day. You feed him for a day. When you give a man a fish, he lives for the day. But when you teach the man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So when you train other people to become a leader, you make your, your entity, your organization, stand and sustain by itself. We should never hesitate to spend time, knowledge, and resources. Let us pour out our knowledge in leadership capacity to other people so that others may be empowered to be somebody else someday. And let us remember that transition takes time. It may be easy for us to say that, ah oh, yes, there will be a change in leadership, don't worry. Tomorrow, the leader will be new. But the change in leadership, the transition in leadership takes time. So, even if we don't have an idea, we should prepare ourselves that there will be a change in leadership. So we should always allocate time for it. You cannot say to your crew, once you have boarded the ship, ah, okay, tomorrow I will be retiring, who will be here next? If you do that, what will happen to the ship? Will it still be running around? Humility is a virtue. When you had been on top, the more you should keep your feet in the ground. When we had the Looking Beyond Disaster in Sendai, Japan, I have this, I can say that the most effective uh, contribution for me in myself is I have a, I have a relinquished or I have given a statement correlating to the bamboo. That is not mine. <laughs> but what I've said about the bamboo is a bamboo tree sways with the wind along with the wind but it does not even break. So it is being flexible that we attain a very successful succession in leadership. And humility, according to this Chinese proverb, is the higher you grow, like the bamboo, the higher you grow, the deeper you bow. We may be on top of the organizational chart, as you can see, you may be on the highest position in the land, but we should always remember that there is a supreme being looking after every one of us. And the more that we are lifted, the more that we should be humble. So, when you become upper class, 
you, I know you have been in the lower positions, but then there is still the humility that should be instilled in each and every one of us. And we remember that even the days as a leader ends, you have the capability to lead others as well. Leadership is not just about the organization. Leadership is not just about manning, being the captain of the ship, making it run. You can be a leader in your own simple ways. You can be a leader of your own family and lead your family in better seas. You can be a leader that you have never imagined yourself that will be. Because leadership is eternal. Once you become a leader, it is within us. Okay. So, do you still have your goals? Okay. After being a leader, after being a captain of the ship, and after circumnavigating the world, after being a leader of the organization, after being at the helm of the organization, after being on top, what happens next? What happens to your boat? What will happen to your boat? Will it sink? Will it crash? Will it be in Bermuda Triangle? Where will you lead your ship? Because your ship has two meanings. Yourself. Where will you lead yourself? Where are you going to lead yourself? And that's a very wonderful boat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can we give this a round of applause? And as you can see, they are very effective because, look, they, they don't have staplers, but they managed to tie this piece of paper here. So very nice. Okay, let us give this another round of applause, please. Yes. This is what? Life raft. Where does this lead you? For safety. Succession in leadership leads you to safety. For survival. Yay. Sir, please, please join me here. <laughs> okay. this is a Sir, what went into your mind when you built this? Sir? I get <laughs> okay, so see, there is a capacity to think beyond the normal position of the boat. If you do not know how to build this boat, then build, build another one. Build another type. Because leadership is your own perception. Leadership is your ability to think of another way to make another boat and to make it flow. Because leadership and succession in leadership is thinking beyond what you can do and what lies unto you. So can we give him another round of applause? Let me end my presentation with this. Succession is an end. We should accept that there is a thing. Yet, a beginning. We begin another chapter of your lives. A leader without a successor is not a success. Can you say that line with me? One, two, three, go. A leader without a successor is not a success. Can we do it another time? One, two, three, go. A leader Okay, thank you so much. That answer. So, do we have any thank questions? You. Thank you very much, Chris. We have time for one question. Is <laughs> a one question? Yes, please. 
Pippi. Firstly, I would like to commend you for your very good uh, presentation. I think you should follow the path on each of them. Okay. And it's not a question that I got from the speech of Steve Jobs during his commemoration speech in 2005. Death, I would just read, death is very likely the single best invention of life. It is life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, but someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. So, we will all be cleared away someday, and I, I think I got the message of Chris that uh, I think I got the message of Chris that each of us should leave a legacy in this world that we are not meant to wake up in the morning, go to work, earn money, and go to sleep. So I hope that all of us here today can leave something whoever we are, wherever we are. Once again, thank you, Chris, for your very good presentation.